recently uploaded a video to this channel showcasing two faulty generic IDE to SATA adapters that I had bought from eBay. Both of them had poor quality aluminum electrolytic capacitors that leaked corrosive acid out onto the PCBs they were soldered to, and the damage done was severe enough that you could visibly see they were DOA before they were even taken out of their packaging. I advise people to beware of them, avoid them if they're uncertain, and stick to high quality adapters like StarTex instead. I stand by that notion, but at the same time I don't want to spread any unnecessary fud about generic adapters that may be of a better quality, so in this video what I'd like to do is go over specifically what to look for and avoid if you're buying or intend to buy a generic adapter like this. There are a couple different kinds, some of them are a little better than others, so it can vary there. Uh, after that, what I'd like to do is clean up and fix one of the dead adapters from the old video, touch it up with a soldering iron, and replace the old capacitors with genuine Rubicons that were ordered from Mouser.com. Mouser being a very reliable parts dealer where you know you're getting legitimate parts that haven't been resleeved, they aren't counterfeits or knockoffs. Afterwards, we'll use it to interface and set up an SSD for a TSOP flashed original Xbox and end with a short in-game performance test of Halo 1 and THPS4 running off of an SSD to mirror the tests previously done on this channel using compact flash and micro SD cards. I want to look at listings on eBay, Amazon, and AliExpress specifically. One of the first things I noticed on eBay, and this seems specific to eBay, is that a lot of the listings will have a picture of one adapter and then the second or third picture down, it's an entirely different one. The one in the first picture has uh, electrolytic capacitors, and then the one in the third picture has tantalum capacitors. Ideally, the one with tantalum capacitors would be probably the better one to get, because unless they use a variety of the aluminum electrolytic types, then something tells me a lot of these adapters are going to end up leaking in the same way that mine did. Next, I have to take a look at AliExpress. AliExpress, to its credit, offers consistency in terms of pictures, and it's probably the most transparent out of all of them. The pictures show how bad this adapter looks right up front. You can see the cold solder joints, you can see all the burn marks, and it puts the capacitors themselves, which look like the same Chongix capacitors that I was talking about in the last video, knockoffs of a Chinese capacitor manufacturer called Chang-X, Chong-X instead. They have them on full display, and... Uh, well, they don't look so good, the pictures are looking great. So it's all right out there in the open for you to see. They're cheap, they ship from China in bulk. And uh, if you're good with the soldering iron and you don't mind spending a couple extra bucks ordering capacitors, these can be cleaned up pretty well. And to their advantage, they also do have a master and slave jumper. So if you're prepared to break out a soldering iron, clean all this up, and order capacitors, these adapters will do fine. I would like to stress that you should especially work on trying to reflow the power, like the IDE power cable pins. Sometimes these adapters have a pretty good connection but if you look at how the traces run on the pin furthest in, the fourth one here, you can see that there is a uh, kind of like a certain pattern that it runs for the conductive material that's soldered to. And in a lot of these, it gets uh, the pad itself ends up getting eaten away. And sometimes it'll look healthy on the surface, or at least kind of healthy. It'll look a lot like the rest of the solder on the board, uh, for better or worse. 
but it won't really look like it's dangerous. And uh, in testing these, I actually ended up having one that had a cold solder joint on a burnt pad. There just wasn't really a lot of conductive material left to it, but it looked on top like it was fine. So be careful for that. With all of these, there's a consistent theme. And it's cold solder joints and bad capacitors. And if you're looking for a generic IDE to SATA adapter, your goal is basically to find the one with the least worst capacitors and the least worst solder joints. Some of them look a lot cleaner, but they're still really not that great. And uh, the ones that actually have a master and slave option, uh, is if you're trying to clone a hard drive with a soft-mounted Xbox or something, they are probably the worst of the bunch out of all the ones I've been looking at on eBay, Amazon, AliExpress. Amazon has been a pretty good source for information on manufacturers and reviews, taking a look at the Sinloon uh, adapter. You can see they have pretty good pictures here. It's all pretty honest and straightforward. Some of the solder joints aren't the cleanest thing in the world. They do look pretty nice for what they are. They look a lot better than the ones that I ordered. Assuming the solder joints are okay and you don't need a master slave, then Sinloon might be one of the best options you can get. It's cheap. You can usually get them for a couple bucks. Lastly, I'd like to take a look at the uh, what they call, how it's listed on Amazon as the CUI IDE PETA 40-pin disc to SATA female adapter. It's blue. It looks pretty clean. It looks nice. There's a little bit of overhead sticking out because the connector itself is so small. This adapter, like Sinloon's, doesn't have a master or slave switch. So that will be contingent. If you need to set something to run in slave mode and you only have this kind of adapter, then you might be stuck unless you can manually adjust the SATA drive itself. Sometimes SATA hard drives have jumpers on them to simulate that kind of IDE pairing. Sometimes they don't. It's kind of a mix and match. But here they're listed for $8.80. Amazon has been the best resource for reviews, I think. What I've been doing is looking at all the one-star reviews and not not to find something to say, don't buy it because, you know, I, I'm a Star Tech fanboy or something. A lot of people are leaving one-star reviews just because it doesn't have a master and slave jumper and it doesn't work in, in an Xbox. And that doesn't seem fair. What does seem absolutely fair are pictures of the adapter badly burnt because somebody plugged it in and tried to use it. I guess because they're all done by hand, at least it looks like they're done by hand or done very quickly, the results may vary significantly from one adapter, one batch to the next. And because of those cold joints, maybe you might have a poor connection in the uh, SATA connector, maybe in the IDE cable connector, or worst of all, it'll be in the power line and uh that is not something you should be paying to experience not by any means so beware of cold solder joints on these you can get lucky and the cold solder joints are in some place where it doesn't matter as much but if they're in a place that matters that can that can cause a world of problems for everything connected to it Okay, here we have the uh, Kingwin SSD SATA to IDE Bridgeboard Adapter, as they call it. 
It says it takes 2.5, 3.5, SATA 1, 2, 3. That looks great. You can already tell from the pictures that it has the same exact problem that we've been seeing consistently throughout this entire overview, and that is cold or poorly flowed joints. And then if you look in the reviews, let's see, let's go to one star. A lot of customers posting pictures where you have several pins bridged together. Some of them look like it would uh, fry out the SATA hard drive being plugged into it immediately. You know, I, I made this video, the whole intent of me making this video was, uh, you know, I, I, I really don't want to sound any alarms, right? I, I don't want to be the guy to say, hey, don't buy this. And then it uh, causes some urban legend to start that only this one kind of adapter is good and everything else is bad. I, I don't want to do that. I, I want to be as genuine about this as possible. And that's why... I made this to try and give the generic IDE adapters some benefit of the doubt, but uh, when you type in IDE to SATA adapter on Amazon, and personally I don't use Amazon, but it says it's Amazon's choice. It's highlighted as their top choice on the page. Even though I wanted to give benefit of the doubt here, honestly, I, I can't really recommend anybody buy these unless they solder and they're ordering they intend to order raw electric components off of mouse or digi key or something uh i just don't see how else i really don't see how else you can just get lucky because i mean you look at the pictures of them and i'll give it to them for that they show it exactly as it's supposed to be sold, right? They're not showing you a picture of one that looks really clean. Everything is visibly on display saying, look at these joints. But I don't think everybody is going to look and stare at this for five, ten minutes. And I think the only reason it's really not that big an issue is because they're so cheap that it's like, hey, it's a bad adapter, but it's only $8, right? The only, the biggest reason that I'm bringing this up, talking about it again, is because you just gotta think, of, you gotta think about the consequences of all the devices that are being used with these. I mean, or especially if power is being given to them, these things, I mean, they just look like, they just look dangerous. And the, the odds of it frying, not only maybe the adapter or maybe a hard drive or an optical drive or something are high enough that I'm surprised that it's a uh, just kind of a casual semi risk thing yeah it's just it's a mix of poor oxidization poor solder flow cold joints bad capacitors but i think past that i i can't really speak about the actual logic chips doing the conversion. I think that's about as far as I can possibly go with this right now. Other than looking at the chips themselves, judging the quality of those. But it seems like I bought the worst possible kind of adapter you can get. And once they're cleaned up properly, they run fine. So I, I don't think the IDE to SATA conversion chip 
any of the the core circuitry that isn't uh, related to capacitors or solder joints. I don't really think that's an issue. That should be fine. But yeah, I I would just say at this point, buy a StarTech adapter. Save yourself the trouble. Unless you want to get better at soldering, then solder away on one of these cheap things. Make it look nice. Well, that about covers what I wanted to look at for these adapters, so let's work on fixing up the broken one. Here's a odd assortment, kind of a Frankenstein Xbox. This is a 128 gig SSD. The SSD itself, the SSD itself is sitting on a floppy disk, non-metallic, to give a little bit of a space here to the StarTech adapter. There's no hard drive in this Xbox right now. This has not been set up yet. I have true hex in, in the DVD drive. Uh, this is a DVD drive from a skeleton Xbox. That power supply and that controller port, you have a 1.1. This has been flashed with the uh, Executor 2 512K BIOS. And uh, like I said, true hex is in the drive. So let's turn it on. Okay, great. So, this recognized the SSD immediately. That's looking good. So, here is our adapter. We'll set this up quick. These adapters serve the same purpose. Everything about them is the same. Since these adapters serve the same purpose, And the StarTech adapter was able to detect that SSD and the Xbox recognized it fine. Uh, then every other part in this Franken Xbox is working. So let's plug it back in. Now 
have an activity light on the back. Pretty sure I set it to master. We'll figure out in the minute for sure. Okay, red light, and perfect. This is actually my first time ever setting up an SSD on an Xbox. I've never tried it before, uh, but after seeing how fast compact flash cards were, I'm a little curious to see, and uh, since I already posted videos before of Halo 1 and Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 4 running on uh, CF and SD cards, I'm inclined to do the same thing with this SSD and see if it's any better or worse. Everything about that looks good. So, let's uh, get out of here. Something I'd like to do while I'm doing all these random tests is set up a uh, SATA hard drive on camera doing basically the same exact thing, maybe using the same adapters, just to get a feel for the consistency of the transfer speed per second. Uh, even with the SATA hard drive, like a SATA 3 hard drive that can do much higher uh, data transfer rates than an original Xbox. It would, it would be worth it to see if there's some volatility with it. It might swing down and then top out where this SSD has been hitting so quickly. Of course the DVD drive comes into play too. Since this Thompson drive uh, was in a skeleton xbox i don't want to put too much stress on it it still works and runs like it's new uh, but you know it does need to be tested a little first and once again xp partitioner looks like it did everything perfectly Let's continue with it anyway, and then uh, back out. Should take us back into the hexen disk. Okay, this is gonna work. Let's just go into the file explorer anyway. Make sure everything's there. Everything looks good. So take true hexen out, turn it off. Started up pretty fast. 
So what I'm going to do is put Halo and Tony Hawk's Free Skater 4 on here and then check back in. Okay, so the game's finished transferring over and like in my last video, I'm just going to play a little bit of Halo 1 and Tony Hawk's Free Skater 4. Pretty much go through the same basic steps in the first level. Not really getting game too much, but just test load times. See how it compares. Go with Tony Hawk 4 first. That's been uh, the routine. So I'll just stick with it. That was faster than the CF card, I think. Really wish I didn't have to do that. Yeah, this is one of the worst. This is probably one of the worst games you can play on a TV like this. This is designed for a CRT. Or at least a new like gaming monitor with low input delay. I've actually gotten a little more used to playing with input lag because uh, I've run this test so many times with different things by this point. quick between menus. Uh, sometimes if I'm testing out a DVD drive to see if it's on the way out, you just shuffle through characters. See how quick that loads? If a DVD drive is really bad off, it might that might make it really struggle loading all these different models off the disc How's it going? because everything is instant so let's pick someone random thousand points.
This is running pretty good. Uh, Compact Flash is really close, but I think this, this beats it. Even the UDMA7 Compact Flash card. Though to be fair, I... Not sure if I actually tested that with an, a 40 pin 80 wire cable. Okay. Now oh, let's try Halo. Yeah, just making it to this title screen, if you have a DVD drive that's on the way out, can be a chore. And I'll load it in a second. I'll do the exact same thing that I did on SD cards, compact flash cards. Failing DVD drives. Working DVD drives. Start a new game of Halo 1. Let's see how it goes. We made a blind jump. How did they get here first? The company ships have always been fast. But for tracking us all the way from Greece, that light speed mind maneuvering option was eliminated. We were running dark, yes. Until the decelerator, no one could have missed the whole story subject. Okay. If this didn't work, the cutscene would have glitched out in a number of ways by now. This is going to work fine. We're in game immediately. Sorry for the quick call messages. Things are a little hectic right now. The disorientation for Cap Crystal. Welcome back, Jeremy. We're at battle ready status. Chief, please look around the room. I need to get a calibration reading from the battlefield's diagnostic. Good. Thank you, sir. I'll put your health monitors online, sir. Vital signs look normal. No freezer burn. Okay, sir. Go ahead and climb out of the cryo tube. Well, there he is. short of time, Chief. Just look at each of the flashing panels to target them. When you lock on, it'll change color. You start the normal. Be sure to read across the border. Bridge the cryo tube with your captain key. Send the master chief to the bridge immediately. Captain, we'll have to skip the weapons diagnostics and I... On the double throw alert. Aye, aye, sir. The skipper seems grumpy. We better get moving. We'll find you weapons later. Okay, I'll need the self-diagnostics later. See you, Master Chief. Things aren't going as well. Cortana did her best, but we never let her have a chance. Who does the home security battleship?
warning. I detected multiple Covenant dropships on approach. I recommend moving into those areas. If we're lucky, the Covenant will believe that everyone aboard this dropship died in the crash. Okay, I'm going to cut it here. Everything ran great, full speed, really no loading, next to no loading at all. So, runs good. This adapter works fine. Be careful. Cheap capacitors. Uh, if you can find a higher quality version of a generic adapter, buy the higher quality version. Look out for aluminum electrolytic capacitors on generic adapters. If you can find flat ones, tantalum capacitors, something along those lines in place of aluminum electrolytics, uh, it's best to do that. Unless you get a good deal and you really want to buy uh, high quality aluminum electrolytic capacitors.